Hi, I'm Francoise Rhodes and welcome to Palm Springs, California, famous for its fabulous weather, its outdoor adventures, its resort style living, and its unique arts and culture scene, which begins right here as we visit the Palm Springs Art Museum. Hey, wanna travel? I'll take you there, wanna dine? I'll tell you where to play golf. I'll pick the spot and I like I know what's hot. It's never too late to get a life. The words museum and history seem to go hand in hand, yet the variety of museums range from science to agriculture, nature to virtual, and yes, even art. What they all have in common is each museum and the items within have a history that's all their own. The Palm Springs Art Museum's past remains an ingrained component of its present, with origins of the institution dating back to the late 1930s, when a dedicated group of individuals transformed their love of nature into the Palm Springs Desert Museum. The museum first opened its doors in January of 1938, occupying a single room in La Plaza downtown. As the valley's popularity grew, so did the museum, moving after a few years to the Wellwood Murray Library. In 1970, the programming shift from natural history to modern and contemporary art began. Annual visitors rose to over 80,000, and the plans for expansion were set in motion. From dignitaries to celebrities, Palm Springs was the place to be, prompting them to rally together and create one of the best art museums in the world. The Palm Springs Art Museum's current location opened in January of 1976, with a week of events attended by civic leaders, residents, children, and some famous faces, with the last names of Sinatra, Annenberg, Disney, and Gabor. Since that time, the museum has expanded with two satellite locations and has opened up new directions and concentrations, offering lectures, entertainment, art camps, tours, children education, and family events. So it's now time for us to step inside and experience the Palm Springs Art Museum. Well, I'm excited to be inside the Palm Springs Art Museum. I come all the time, but each time I visit, there's something new for me to see. In fact, last time I was here, I didn't even know there were three floors. Joining us is Scott Slavin. Hi, Scott. Hey, Francoise. Well, here we are. Welcome. We're gonna see some things that the public doesn't always get to view. So I am really excited about this. So Scott, why don't you give us an overview of how large this museum is and, and some of the components. I think a lot of first time visitors here are surprised, number one, at the size of our museum. Uh, number two, I like to think the, our collection. And the fact that we uh, have three locations. We're in downtown right now, downtown Palm Springs. Just five blocks away, there's the uh, Architecture and Design Center, which obviously focuses on architecture and design. And in Palm Desert, we have a single gallery museum, and it's surrounded by the Faye Sarkowski Sculpture Garden, which is a beautiful space to walk through. In the main museum, we've got three floors, as you noted. These two front wings are primary exhibition spaces for either traveling shows or original uh, exhibitions. Downstairs, we have the Annenberg Theater, 450-seat theater, lots of performing arts uh, attractions there. We have a bistro downstairs, and our second floor, uh, has a lot of work from our permanent collection, focused largely on Western art. Also has uh, some great Henry Moore sculptures. Then our third floor is all contemporary art. And we are going to visit all these different areas of the museum, plus the other two locations. But today you will see that there are many visitors here because the Palm Springs Art Museum is open to the public on a daily basis. Uh, we're closed Wednesdays, but we're open every other day. Uh, in fact, our second Sunday of every month is free, and uh, Thursday evenings are free. Here we are surrounded by beautiful glassworks. T, where are we? Where are we starting? We are starting in on the first floor of the museum. This is our glass gallery. This gallery has been dedicated to glassworks from all over the world, and that's what you're seeing around us now. In this particular wing, it's all glassworks. But what's interesting and fascinating about glass is that you can paint on it, you can chisel it, you can sculpt it, you can mold it, and you can blow it. It's really fascinating material, and that's why you're seeing so many different varieties here. This collection is uh, owned by Ostergaard and Kaplan. They're a local Palm Springs, a Coachella Valley couple, who have uh, promised their collection to the museum, and they're kind enough to come in and share it with us 
and rotate it occasionally as well. Does that happen often where you get uh, philanthropists who want to donate the works that they've collected over the years? Yes, uh, that happens a lot. We get contributions from artists as well and then we make purchases through our councils here at the museum. I love the vibrancy, I love the colors and I think it's time for us to look around. From one gallery to another, where are we now, T? This is the Frederick Slight Gallery. It's part of the Denny Wing of the museum, and this is where we highlight our Western collection. What is this? I want to put this on my wall. Isn't this amazing? <laughs> so this is a contemporary art piece by a local uh, Native American artist by the name of Gerald Clark, and this piece was actually commissioned specifically for this space. Is it made out of cans? It is. <laughs> So what I'd like you to do is take a close look and see if you can identify what type of cans are on here. Do I see Coca-Cola? You do. 7-Up? Yes. Squirt? Yes. You'll be fascinated by this. This is actually mounted on a big satellite dish. I love things like this. So maybe I can talk to Scott later on to let me take it home. T, I see Native American baskets and my mother would love this because she collects them. What are we looking at here? These are baskets that are made by the Cahuilla tribe. And these are examples of Cahuilla baskets. This is probably one of the most impressive collections in the country of the Cahuilla tribe. Now, I was told that each one of the designs tell a story. Is that right? They do. Uh, it depends on when they're made. Traditionally, you'll find uh, images of animals or water. On this basket here, what does that bring to mind, that pattern? Lightning? Exactly. So the weather obviously plays a big part to people who live out in the desert. Simple, safe, secure. Your home, your business, your life. Protected 24-7 by Command One Security. The trusted local experts. Command One Security offers fire, burglar, and medical protection with remote access for control on the go. Our competitively priced quality products use the latest technology. Get free conversion for most existing systems and three months free monitoring. No landline required. Simple, safe, secure. Command One Security. Visit us online for options and special offers. A1 Custom Golf Cars in Palm Desert is the Valley's leader in custom-built, street-legal lithium battery golf cars. Holding a charge much longer than conventional golf cars with no water to add, no messy acid leaks, and no maintenance. At A1, our covered lithium battery systems last 10 to 15 years, delivering 60 to 100 amp hours of power. Join the new generation of street-legal lithium battery-powered golf car owners today, only at A1 Custom Golf Cars, with three locations to serve you. Traveling with Francoise has expanded with a new parent company, Artifacts and Arts Across America, a registered 501c3. Our mission is to explore, educate, and inspire you to visit the blueprint of America, small towns. We'll help spread the word about these amazing places with your help. You can donate by visiting the homepage of TravelingWithFrancoise.com as we are currently building the AAA America website. These small towns need our help now. Thank you for your support. This portion of Traveling with Francoise is brought to you by Indian Ridge Country Club in Palm Desert. Love where you play. Diane Williams and Associates. Trust experience, experience trust. Discover the Palm Springs Art Museum located in downtown Palm Springs. ACT Tours, explore the world. CoachellaValley.com. If it's happening, it's here at CoachellaValley.com. Welcome back to Traveling with Francoise. So what you're seeing in this gallery is a collection of paintings that are categorized as Western art in general, but what we love about it is that some of the best artists who did Western paintings also love this valley, Coachella Valley. And this artist here as an example is James Swinnerton who spent a lot of time here in the desert and you might recognize some of the plant life, uh, the atmospheric light uh, that he uses. And of course, no Western gallery would be complete without showing some of the people who migrated here and, and uh, made this land part of their home. We're walking upstairs to the second level of the museum. 
and this is what we call our mezzanine. And we have art all around the perimeter, but we also have a nice view of the atrium that's here. On this side, we have some uh, modern art sculptures, and on the other side of the atrium, we have our pre-Columbian collection. This is quite impressive. Isn't it? This is one of my favorite pieces that uh, the museum has. This is by Helen Frankenthaler, who was an abstract expressionism. This piece is a great transition from the Western galleries, actually. She spent a lot of time in the Southwest. Although this is abstract and there's really not a specific thing she's trying to show us, there really is hints of the mesas in New Mexico at sunset. Even though that might not be her intention, that's what I bring uh, or get from it. Art is in the eye of the beholder. Totally. Yes. And I see sculptures. There are several sculptures here. Yes. This piece is one of the more significant pieces in our collection. It was recently gifted from Gwen Wiener. The Wiener family collection is a prominent collection in this museum's history, and we're so lucky to have it. Is that a Picasso? It is. Oh, there we go, right here. Pablo Picasso. Let's Everybody talk a little bit about Pablo this. Picasso, and this is his angry owl. He had a fascination with uh, owls, in fact, and he had several of them, and we're very lucky to have this in our collection. Now, is this permanent or is this a moving exhibit? Um, all of our collection is moved occasionally to be paired with other works so that when you come into the museum, you're always going to see something either a little different or in a different context to make it more interesting. All right. Well, something behind cameraman Steve over there is quite impressive. I think we should wander over there. Okay. See, I know what this is because yeah. there are several of these all over the Coachella Valley and even in Las Vegas. It is a piece by Chihuly. Dale Chihuly, that's exactly right. He is probably the best known glass artist in the world, but he's certainly uh, the best known in the United States. It is incredible. It the colors are so vibrant. It just, I could stand here and look at this piece for hours and so much to look at. There is so much to look at. There's so much color and this is a great room for it because we have natural light, uh, yet it's still protected. This is probably one of the favorite pieces when we tour school children here. They are fascinated by the shapes and the colors. Again, this proves my point that when you go to any museum, there are so many facets to it. There's so much to see. It's not just always paintings. It's not just always sculptures. Look at the beautiful glass artwork right here. There is really something for everyone. Mara, where are we? Well, we're on the museum's third floor, which features the museum's incredible collection of contemporary and modern art. It is very airy and bright up here, such a different feel than other parts of the museum. Yeah, this is a great space to take in the museum's collection from a different perspective. And you're really lucky because today uh, we have a little bit of a behind the scenes insight um, in that we're reinstalling our permanent collection. So we're entering a gallery featuring works from one of the museum's great benefactors, Steve Chase. He gave us some terrific works of art and he also uh, gave us a donation that allowed us to build this third floor. This is a work by Nancy Graves, an American painter, a great colorist, really interested in abstract forms, shapes, and uses a real playfulness in her approach to paintings and sculptures. I'm really drawn to color, so when I see paintings like this and I see the glass works and all that, to me, that is something that pulls me. However, this piece of metal over here, I'm quite intrigued by that. So this is a work by John Chamberlain, who became known for making sculptures out of crushed automotive materials. So this is all the skin of a car. But what I love about this work is how elegant the form is, even though he may have used a very violent approach towards making it, he looked to materials that were unusual in creating his sculptures. This is a work by Gavin Turk. Uh, he has a really playful approach to sculpture. These are made of solid bronze. No. I'm looking at this. Actually, I am mesmerized by these uh, trash bags that are made out of bronze. 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 But then and off to the corner, I see this gigantic spider on the wall. 
So this is one of the most beautiful and lyrical works in our collection. It's by a sculptor named Louise Bourgeois. The spider is a motif that you see a lot in her work. We're so proud to have this work in our collection. This is a work by the San Francisco-based artist Jim Campbell. He's really interested in pixels and digital media, but also in the information that we need as humans to interpret an image or to interpret work. He's actually using a really simple computer system that turns the lights on and off a little bit. I'm so excited to show you this space. The museum has long been a champion of contemporary art practices and this exhibition, Brave New Worlds, features just that. Uh, there are five contemporary women artists based in Southern California, including Gisela Colon, whose work is featured here. But what I love about her work is that she uses technological forms and new materials to create objects that seem to move and have real organic energy in them as you walk around them. Mara, as we've been walking around, I've noticed a lot of people pulling out their camera and taking photographs. I didn't know this was allowed in a museum, is it? It is, unless you see a sign saying otherwise. We love when our visitors share pictures of the artwork that they saw that had a, had a real impact on them. All right, well, I think this is a perfect selfie spot. So cameraman Steve, take a photo. There's one area you might think is an exhibit when it's actually the gift shop. Give yourself time to explore because there's so much to see and purchase. Everyone that knows me knows that I love to take you behind the scenes, and we're going to do that right now here at the museum. We're going to visit the vault, and to help us do that is Alicia Thomas. Hi. Hi. So, Alicia, what is your position here? I'm the Director of Exhibitions and Collections Management here at the museum, and our department oversees the production of exhibitions, the care of the collection, legal paperwork, insurance, contracts, budgets, pretty much all the mechanics behind what happens with an art museum. That is a lot, but what is behind this door? So, in terms of taking care of the collection, we have seven vaults on the property. This is the Douglas Vault. It's our largest. Let's take a peek inside. Wow, this is incredible. So this vault contains between five and 6,000 works of art, of all media. The reason why we can put paintings, sculptures, photographs, drawings in this vault is because it is the soundest environmental vault that we have down here in the basement of the museum with cement concrete walls. On this side, we have paintings on screens, and then these are rolling carriages. Rolling carriages cost about $50,000, $60,000, but they're so important as space savers. Alicia, as I look around this room, I am in awe because there are so many pieces here. Are they owned by the museum? Are they on loan? And how long would they stay in a vault like this? Good questions. Well, the majority of the pieces in this vault are owned by the Palm Springs Art Museum. There are loans as well in here. I do not know the percentage amount, loans versus collections. They're in here because we don't have them on view in the galleries. And most people do not know that museums generally store 90 to 95% of their collections. So at some point, these works in here, including sculptures, I can see down some of these aisles, they will make their way up into the museum. Absolutely, All right. as well, we rotate things in and out. Okay, well then now you mentioned these long cabinets here. What do they do? Right, these are rolling carriages and they're designed to hold many works, but also be very easy to use. As you can see, I'm turning and opening it with a finger. And in this aisle, we store primarily photographs in archival boxes, and also prints and drawings that are unframed in these drawers. Alicia, this has been fascinating, but we have so much more to see today in the museum, so we have to head on out, but thank you so much. You're so welcome. Here at the Palm Springs Art Museum, the educational programs are a vital part of the Palm Springs Art Museum. Joining us now is Hillary Roberts, and Hillary, tell us a little bit about what happens here in the educational areas. The education department offers a number of activities uh, for students and the community. For the community, we have our pop-up studio artist in residence program, where the museum invites artists and makers to be in residence at the museum. They offer community and student workshops. 
Does that mean I can actually learn how to paint something? Yeah, we have uh, more information on our website. Uh, they offer workshops for all levels, beginners, intermediate, and advanced students. I'm in. Behind the scenes, there are a lot of art programs for students here at the museum. I am in the art studio here, and I'm attempting to make something, which I'm not sure what I'm making. What happens in this room besides me trying to make something? This is the room where we have most of our art activities for our field trips. We have students visiting the museum for field trips every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. We have, on average, about 60 students in kindergarten through, through fifth grade. This is the opportunity for students to really have a hands-on experience working with authentic art materials. Zach, how often do children come in here that have never touched a piece of art material? Unfortunately, with the way that our school system is these days, there aren't very many opportunities for students to engage in the arts. So for many of our students that visit the museum, not only is this their first time visiting a museum, but it's off, oftentimes their first time working with uh, authentic art materials like painting, printmaking, sculpture, and collage. And that right there explains why these programs are, are so important, just to give our children a chance to experiment with art, see the colors, see the materials, make something, and it could be something like this which, I'll be honest, I did not make one of the students did. It could be something like the pictures that are around the room, but to get their hands involved, hands on, have fun with it, and who knows, we might have a Picasso right here in the making. Exactly, that's what we hope for. After viewing three floors of exhibits, I found the perfect place to unwind and relax before lunch, right here in the Sculpture Garden. Cheers. I am starving and we are in luck. Right here on property and open to the public is the Persimmon Bistro, serving salads, soup, paninis, and more. I am here with Art Vasquez, who is the chef owner here at Persimmon Bistro. Our menu is geared more to a, a light lunch. We have our olive flight, which is in the share section. So let's say you wanted to have something light, a glass of Chardonnay and share some olives with some friends. and. You know, lose a couple hours listening to some music and drinking some wine. But if you want to go a little bigger, you go with the full charcuterie board, which is usually three meats and three cheeses, and then all the accoutrement that go with that. And then from the panini section, our pesto chicken panini is very, very popular. Just recently, we've opened up to the Annenberg Theater. So now guests can actually eat lunch with the Annenberg Theater in the background and it's just, it's very stunning. It opens up the bistro. And you also have the wine and beer bar to complement all the dishes on the menu. And here is a tip. The Persimmon Bistro is a destination within a destination. It is open to the public. You can walk in anytime, whether you're visiting the museum or not. So remember, Persimmon Bistro, located inside the Palm Springs Art Museum. Simple, safe, secure. Your home, your business, your life. Protected 24-7 by Command One Security. The trusted local experts. Command One Security offers fire, burglar, and medical protection with remote access for control on the go. Our competitively priced quality products use the latest technology. Get free conversion for most existing systems and three months free monitoring. No landline required. Simple, safe, secure. Command One Security. Visit us online for options and special offers. A1 Custom Golf Cars in Palm Desert is the Valley's leader in custom-built, street-legal lithium battery golf cars. Holding a charge much longer than conventional golf cars with no water to add, no messy acid leaks, and no maintenance. At A1, our covered lithium battery systems last 10 to 15 years, delivering 60 to 100 amp hours of power. Join the new generation of street-legal lithium battery-powered golf car owners today, only at A1 Custom Golf Cars, with three locations to serve you. This portion of Traveling with Francoise is brought to you by Indian Ridge Country Club in Palm Desert. Love where you play. Diane Williams and Associates. Trust experience, experience trust. Discover the Palm Springs Art Museum located in downtown Palm Springs. CoachellaValley.com. If it's happening, it's here at CoachellaValley.com. Welcome back to Traveling with Francoise. At the main museum, we talked about three locations. So our next stop is here at the Palm Springs Art Museum Architecture and Design Center. Oh! <laughs> Joining us is Brooke Hodge. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Francoise. This is 
quite amazing in here. Now, before we go any farther, the building, there's a story behind the building here. Tell us about that. This building was a bank building. It was Santa Fe Savings and Loan. My predecessor, Sidney Williams, was the catalyst for the museum to mount a campaign to save the building, raise the funds to restore it, and to turn it into uh, this beautiful gallery space that we're in. This is the work of Barbara Stoffacker Solomon. She is an artist and a designer. She's 90 years old, and she lives in San Francisco, and she still works. And she made these beautiful paintings that are landscapes but they're also exactly the same size as a ping pong table. Our visitors can play ping pong in the gallery. And that's what the title of the exhibition, Breaking All the Rules, refers to, because as you mentioned already, people aren't used to playing ping pong in a museum. And how long do exhibits normally stay here at the A&D Center? They're usually here for about three months. About three months. Now, I'm asking this because I'm not even sure when people buy an admission ticket to the Palm Springs, the main museum, does that allow them to come in here? Yes, it does. If they come here first, then they buy a ticket here for less. Mm -hmm. And when they go to the main museum with their sticker on, they get a discount there. So it all sort of works really well together. Perfect. And before we go, there's one last room that I know you all want to see, and that is your gift shop, because you have a very yeah, spectacular sure. one. Yep. So when you are in downtown Palm Springs, you can either stop here at the Architecture and Design Center first, and then go to the Palm Springs Art Museum or vice versa, but whatever you do, you want to make sure that you visit both. Thanks, Brooke. Thank you, Francoise. 13 miles from downtown Palm Springs, you will find the Palm Springs Art Museum in Palm Desert, the Galen. Perhaps this might be your first stop on your museum tour, or maybe your last. But for me, I find this museum a very intimate experience, quite different from the other two. There are seven galleries to look through. It's not a static collection, but there's always something new to see. Excuse me, can you slide over just a bit so I can sit down? Wait a minute, they're part of the exhibition. And they look so real. Another unique feature about this location is the Faye Sarkowski Sculpture Garden. When you walk around it, just relax and let it embrace you. While you're here, here's a tip. Download the app so you'll learn about the sculptures and the garden plants. Museums are meant to be explored, enjoyed, and give you something to think about. I want to thank the museum staff and the docents who helped make this show a work of art. So remember, until next time, it's never too late to get a life. Hey, want to travel? I'll take you there. Want to dine? I'll tell you where to play golf. It's never too late to get a life.